Hello everybody. It's about 10 o'clock on Monday night and I've been vigorously pulling art off the walls and photographing it and really excited about presenting this next segment to you. But I have a confession to make and it's something I realized as I had been going through this that I had really begun to take my collection for granted. It's something you're very familiar with. It's like a relationship you've been in for a long time, a job you've had for a long time. You become bored. You just don't appreciate it like you should. And by going through this exercise and taking the time and going through every piece, I've really fallen back in love with it all over again. So I hope you enjoy this next segment. And that's my And now room. we move into the living room. I'm gonna do a little shot of the whole room. So you can see all the art. The blue wall. Also have a large screen piece there. Some ceramics. And we'll begin right here with Lunar Landing by Brian Barossa. This was done in collaboration with photographer Joshua Gobel, who's his brother-in-law. And Brian did a painting on top of the photo. There's actually two in this series. Uh, there's another version of this uh, uh, with different figures on it. But I really liked all the funny, happy, and sad faces on the piece. And it just jumped out at me. I thought, I have to have that piece. Now we move over to this wall. And this was done by Mark Hart, my partner. This was painted about 11 years ago. He was sitting uh, at his uh, little apartment on Laguna Street after 2008 lost his job and was wondering what he was going to do next. He always wanted to paint and now he had some time. So he sat one evening on Laguna with my roommate, Timothy Cummings, who's an accomplished artist, for an art lesson. And this is what came out of that first out, a little portrait of Timothy pretty amazing right out of the gate and you'll see very shortly there's other pieces of his that are kind of unbelievable for somebody that just began at the age of 52. Now we're going to move down to the couch. I had to pull this off the wall because it was a little hidden. This was a piece uh, that was owned by my grandmother Norma Fisher. Little game of cat and mouse there. It's by artist A. Petrocelli probably done in the early 1900s. We think she went to Italy, obviously pre-World War I, on a little tour and picked this up. Sitting in my family's home ever since I was a kid, and I love it. Glad to have it. Move over here to another piece by Mark Hart. Mark painted this a few years back for my birthday. It was taken from a Victorian photograph. What is different from the photograph is the background, the branch, the little figures in the pedestal. The mouse in the hand wasn't there, but it looked like it should have been there. And the face is actually of my grandfather, Alex Gottlober. I asked Mark to do that intentionally. Alex Gottlober, was a found grandfather. My father found out that Alex was his real father when he was 62 years old. And that's a whole other story and we'll get into that another day. We move over here to the first piece I got from Mark. It's a self-portrait that he did. Mark kind of always felt like a bit of an alien, so he depicted that in this piece. The orb with all those magical spheres uh, crimes over to the top of the painting as well. 
and I'll, you'll see that in the slideshow that follows. Look at the pupils of his eyes, they're galaxies. And then moving up here is a piece by Timothy Cummings. It was a piece that I bought from Timothy shortly after we got bought out of our flat in Hayes Valley. He had an art show. I had been eyeing this piece and I begged him to sell it to me and he acquiesced and now it sits on this wall. Look how these two pieces speak to each other on the wall. I like to hang art that has a dialogue with each other. Each piece is kind of talking to each other and it has a flow to it. Now we move over here to a grand piece by Mark Hotchkiss. This is of the Pearl Concubine. It was based on a photograph of the Pearl Com Concubine, uh, Consort Keishun, who was in the Qing Dynasty. And the rumor has it that she was ordered to be pushed down a well by uh, Empress Sisi. There's a lot of mythology around her. And it's a very, she's got a very intense look on her. It's, this is a really dynamic piece. Uh, in the background are Chinese celebratory notices. And the eyes actually in the right light flash gold. It's hard to see here, but you will see it in the photographs that follow in the slideshow. I'll try to get in a little close up here. So you can kind of see it right there as I change the angle. Above that is another uh, familial piece. This is a little piece of uh, on, on a wood background and those are all jade uh, sections that were carved out and put on this. And this belonged to Grandma Norma. And here it hangs above the pearl concubine. We now move over here and there's a lot of reflection here. Again, you'll see at the slideshow a little better image of this. This is a piece by Timothy Cummings. I bought this several years ago, and I was very attracted to it. There's something about that boy. He looks eerily sad. Um, well, I guess you would be too if you had death and a red robin on your head, and I'm not sure about that symbology, but I know there's symbology there. I was really staring at this last night. I was just photographing it and took it out of the glass, and it's a very intense piece. We move up to this piece, not as intense, kind of fun and whimsical. This was the very pe first piece that Timothy painted when he moved into Linden Street. And I, I said I had to have it. I'm a little Aries and we've got to have the first thing, you know. It's always about starting things and I had to have this first piece and I treasure it. Here we move over to another piece that was in the family. This was Norma's again. We believe she collected it in the 1920s when she did a tour of China. And uh, it looks like it's a, a worker in rice, rice fields, rice paddies. Nice little piece, I really like it. We move over to the big screen on the wall. I picked this up at an art auction when I was working at the Regency Center. It was for uh, the Gay Asian Alliance. It was a fun event. Uh, George Takai was there, Takai was there. Got to give him a tour of that building. And I picked this up at the art auction. I don't know much about it. I need to get it appraised, but I just loved it. Now we move down here. These are two little pieces that were done by an artist, a child artist, in our old neighborhood on Hay Street. There was a liquor store and the kids were talented, loved to paint. So they started doing this kind of out of the, uh, on the counter of the, uh, of the liquor store. And then they were so successful at selling these that the kids started painting every weekend and out front. And these are two little pieces. And I, I love them and probably paid $8 a piece for them. I encourage everyone, if you don't have uh, original art, to go out and buy original art. You don't have to pay a fortune for it support an artist and have something that is one of a kind in your home. Here we move to three pieces by Brian Parasa. These are the last three pieces we're gonna to see today. I treasure these ceramics and they're recent, uh, recent to my collection within the last uh, couple of years. Brian did a few shows 
he's so talented. Uh, the one on the top left is called a kokai, which is a Japanese ghost. And they can be mischievous, malevolent, or bring you good fortune. And I will go with the latter. Over here, we have the snake deity. It looks really alien. Very intense piece. Look at those eyes and look at that glaze. Snake deity. And now we have the Russian River Reptilian. I saw this in a show that he did on Market Street. I believe it's called Cap. And I just fell in love with it. It had a lot of juju, a lot of power to it. And I thought, well, I've got to have this. I've got to own this. Look at all that texture. Look at all the work that he's done in that piece and the glaze. Really magnificent. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the living room. Enjoy the slideshow that follows. And I promise to try to get the first part of the bedroom out or the boudoir in the next few days.